Welcome back from the break. You are watching Man Talk here on KTN Home. Use the hashtag Man Talk and the hashtag KTN Life and Style so we can see all your tweets and all your posts on social media. All my guests are going to be sharing their handles as well so you can be able to reach them directly. And there's also the text line right there on the screen, 22151. Text us, tell us what you think about the show or if you even want to come on as a guest, that is where you can let us know. There is also KTN Home social media pages. It's KTN Home everywhere. KTN Home underscore, I believe, on Twitter and on Instagram. Now, we were discussing narcissists. And we had just gotten to the juicy, juicy part where people were actually sharing their own personal experiences with the women that they encountered who they thought, hmm, perhaps this woman is also a narcissist. So if you're watching and maybe you thought only men are narcissists, Women can do it pretty well too. You know what they say, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Exactly. <laughs> now, Brian, you actually went on a date or two, kind of, actually with the one, narcissist. One. It was one, because you had the doubt. And imagine, she went through that menu for Java. And she was like, all oh, these things, I can't see anything that I can eat here. Why did you the do The whole one? menu. The whole menu. It's like the, the ones who walk through Nick's entire shop yeah. and they can't see anything. They can't but get a seat. Prob yeah. Probably, maybe even she didn't know what to choose, so I, I recommended for her now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's very smart. It's a drink, it's hot, but yeah. you only need to be there as long as the drink is there. Once it's finished, I'm to really quick. Of course. <laughs> So you gave us really good advice on if you do a date with somebody and maybe they're seeming a bit off, give them their time, give them their moment, let, give them to speak, especially for women it's very easy, you don't have to work hard as men, just sit down, we will start. Yeah. <laughs> and some of the things that she was saying gave you a hint of this is somebody who has ridiculous standards, mm -hmm. I personally think, yeah. ridiculous standards for when she wants to date mm -hmm. or how she sees life mm -hmm. when you get married. Mm -hmm. Somebody even talking about marriage at the first date. How are you sure that I will marry you? You yeah. Like this is guaranteed. Yeah. So it's a bit heavy, but um, thank you for sharing that and a really helpful tip for everybody. Now, Alan, it's your moment. Have you ever dated a narcissist is what I was asking or even had a close friend or relative who dated one? Uh, personally, I've dated one, uh -huh. and to some extent, I've become one some time back. Oh, yeah. 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 So this is, yeah, yeah, this is so cool. So start off with dating one. I'll yeah. ask you the same question I asked Nick. How long was the relationship? Uh, about one year. About one year. About one year. Okay. So this lady, she's a great lady anyway. She, mm -hmm. She's a banker out of the country. Okay. But uh, the problem was uh, you realize... Uh, truth be told, she was, she has that financial elasticity yes. more than I. Right. So she was kind of controlling. Mm -hmm. So even if I have a project, I want to do this kind of a project, she will be like, you must do it this way. It's a must, you know. If you deviate from my business yeah. plan, my direction, yeah. it will fail. Then uh, one saddest thing that I did that I always regretted is um, I... I introduced her to my friend, so my ah, closest friend. Yeah. So she will do everything and anything. Like you, you like when you are just seated with your friends, she will just even impress them some good amount of money. Wow. So she has, she has won their attention in terms of uh, right. whatever she will tell them yeah. about me. That will we'll be, have to fly. We will have to fly. So she was kind of like. You have to you have to move houses. You have to do things this way. But you know, personally, she wanted like to fund my lifestyle. But personally, I'm a man. You know, I have yeah. yeah. So and uh, she will create an impression to my friends that you know what well, this guy is not serious with life. This guy, you know. So she really tried to put me down in all aspects, and that's when I came to one conclusion: is either you are an, in a serious relationship or you are the one taking the relationship serious. Mm -hmm. So, so it was uh, it was quite challenging because she reached to a point whereby you know the the way someone and even I had not introduced her to my parents. Right. So, but because we are that close, she yes. took my phone, and uh, she started talking to my mom. Oh, really? You know, I've heard this story from narcissists before. Yeah. Oh my God! Continue. Yeah, she was uh, talking to my mom. Like, uh, in a week, she will uh, send my mom some good money. 
Yeah, and she's out of the country, so you can imagine. Right. Yeah, so... It's coming in dollars. Yeah, it's coming in dollars. <laughs> so my mom will be like, sometimes my mom will call, how is she doing? So I wondered, how did this person, you know? Yeah, she's gotten so close. Your yeah, mom like, genuinely worried before about Before even her. you know it, like, my entire family, my extended family knows yes. her. Because anything happens, she's in talks with everyone. Everybody. Right. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. like she pocketed everybody. So yes. That yeah. And you know, like I mean, not in a bad way, but money talks. And, you know, yeah. Say that. So interacting with everybody financially, <laughs> financially they feel yeah. comfortable mm. enough. If I've sent you tombs, you feel comfortable enough for yeah. us to talk. Because even like, uh, I'm so close to, with my sister and uh, she's in form for right now. So I realized even she went further paying school fees for my sister. Wow. So, um, no. uh, yeah, she did everything. Even she had planned our wedding wow. behind oh. my back, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. There was a wedding planner, there was, there was a wedding planner. And, and, and yeah, like the, the, the day I said I've taken in enough is uh, one day I'm, I'm seated in church mm -hmm. because, uh, <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm a leader in church. Right. I'm sat there. Kumbe, she went also further and uh, contacted my church pastor. Wow. wow. There was a project in church, you understand? Yeah. So she sent in some good money. Yeah. Then after sending in some good money, she shared a testimony that even my boyfriend is there, we're planning a wedding, all those kind of things in church. And you can imagine this thing is being read on the pulpit. That's you're in church thinking, in church, is there know? a week so, I missed? Like, was I in a coma? Did I sleep and miss exactly. something? You're like <laughs> so I was just imagining, because in this environment, they know me like, I'm not dating anyone, first yeah. of all. Yeah. Right. So I was just imagining, assuming that day I went with my girl there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so all those kind of scenarios. So I was with, even with my friends, you know, people who we serve with in the department. So they were like, hey, how come? So everyone was shocked. So I... I had to, by all means, because she's, she was kind of also sharing a testimony, which right. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. This person that you're saying will be your husband to be, the yeah. person that you're investing so, so you're much in, in has no Yeah, I'm idea. living in the dark. So, uh, you know, it was so, like, uh, I was so shocked. So they were like, uh, because the person who was announcing was like, even Lawrence himself is here. Mm -hmm. He needs to come in front and say something. And remember, they view me as, you know, as a leader there. So you can imagine how it was. You're walking towards the pulpit and you're I, just like, what? I, I went there, I said, yeah. Because she was sharing a testimony that there is a deal she has won and what have you. So I just concentrated on that part. I said, yeah, there was a deal she told me. Oh, literally, I lied. Huh? I lied. Yeah. In church, yeah. Yeah, in church I had to lie, you know. Yeah. So immediately after, after that, I what? had to say, you know what, enough that's, is enough. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's enough is enough now. because the direction at which we are going. Because even she, she went further, uh, got into my social media accounts mm -hmm. and everything. So, the, like, she did, like, she wanted to control actually everything I do. Every aspect of Every aspect life. of my life. So, I said this one. I, I called a few of my good friends. I said, you know what, sometimes also you as an advisor, you need advice. Yeah. So we sat and it was like, you know, a relationship can only work if it is worth it. True. Yeah, so I was like, this is not worth it. I had to say goodbye in a good way. So then, uh, because I, 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 just, I just went silent over it. After like two months, that's when I gained the courage and I told her, you know what, this cannot work. Yeah. And I warned all my friends. If you truly value me as, as, as your friend, we, you better cut links with that lady. Yes. And that is it. So uh, it was a defining moment also for me because, In your life, uh, yeah. My, yeah, because also my friends, they, had, they, they concentrated so much. Yeah. Yeah, so there's um, some who realize my loyalties are actually here. Yeah. But even you, you realize. Yeah. Oh, come on, loyalties, now you're in the work at work. So yeah. it was just like that. Then uh, I told my mom, is either you like is either you you talk to her or me? Yeah, you had to give an offer. Yeah, so everyone, it was just a defining moment. Yeah, it, and uh, I know at the time your family probably didn't understand. They probably they, didn't. they were like, "What are you saying about this they person? Didn't. That's crazy. Yeah. This sounds like a very nice lady. She's approached me. She's very sweet. Yeah. she sends us tunes whenever we need." Yeah. So, how was that conversation later? Like your mom now is she aware? Is she like? 
does she understand what was happening in the relationship even though she didn't understand it immediately yeah. after the breakup does she get it now yeah now she get she gets it okay. because uh she was doing all those kind of things and uh she was kind of putting me down mm. because she was painting a, a different picture about me and uh all those kind of things so it was really difficult very difficult but i had to to take to take that bold step and be like you know i have my life to lead yeah. you cannot determine the life that i want to live 100% yeah i'm so happy you got out of that situation <laughs> but you know the that is the nuts yeah the now afterwards you said that you got some narcissistic traits yourself yeah so was it like trauma from the relationship was it you trying to figure yourself out like what was it uh that was uh before even i entered into this relationship aha uh -huh, it was uh, before uh, yeah. do you think you called her somehow <laughs> with you we live with courage i think you know whatever whatever you do sometimes it comes around you know they, they, how do they say it? That what goes around comes, comes around. around yeah so i think i was paying back but i believe i wasn't that but i'm not defending myself but right. i believe i wasn't as as serious as she was as she so was. how would you describe yourself before this narcissistic relationship when you say you had some narcissistic traits or you would have described yourself as a narcissist back then mm -hmm. how would you describe yourself i i was uh, so much nagging and controlling mm. uh, where are you who are you with you know i was so much insecure with the people like uh, you are hanging around who you know all those kind of things yeah yeah so i believe uh, i was that you know in that in that setup yeah and you know you the, the, the saddest part was uh you know for like that lady now this one uh, the one i was telling you about mm -hmm. is um after some time uh, i got a uh, an ambassadorial job somewhere right. so the you know i was all over in, in papers so she was like I, I think she got the papers from my friends. Yeah, again. I feel like guys in diaspora get news faster than exactly, us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Two five four. I completely agree. So one day I, I received a call. She's all nice to me. I'm like before, so I sat back. I'm like, why? Why now? Why now? Yeah. So that's when I realized, you know what? It makes sense with this new job post. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was she was she trying to chat you up and see yeah. which country are you going to be going to? Gonna exactly, be yeah, all those kind of things. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, okay. Crazy. People are Thank going you for through sharing a lot, that, yeah. and that is crazy. Yeah. And I think um, boundaries are a thing in relationships when you are starting out. There is that initial love and the initial spark when you when you. When you're new in a relationship, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, you love the, like anything that they do. I believe we had an episode on divorce and separation, and Mohammed Bank, one of the guests, said, "When you love someone, the initial honeymoon period, even if they did cut bills in front of state house, you'd be like, this is the most beautiful <laughs> act I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Yes, you know." So that initial stage, everything is so sweet and everything is so nice. You want them to meet everyone. You're talking about what you're gonna name your kids, yes. but then after a while things start to settle, yeah. right? And you start really being in the relationship and really being with this person. Now, narcissists, which is one big lesson you guys need to learn from what Alan is saying, is they have no respect for boundaries, mm -hmm. none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. She was in your social media accounts. She had your passwords. She, she could post for you if she wanted. She could delete DMs if she wanted. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> She's taken your phone and taken your mother's phone number mm -hmm. and reached out to her. Yeah. She's abroad. Yeah. I mean, the crossing of boundaries is just so far. And when you're in that initial honeymoon stage, like I was saying, you won't see it. Mm -hmm. But when you start feeling that this person is crossing those boundaries, and when you have that conversation with them, they don't see it as something big. Then they've compromised you. Why would you talk to a mother that you've never met and then send her money? Yeah. That's not a normal relationship, and that's yeah. not how things should be. And I think narcissists women and men tend to behave in the same way because all those things that you're saying my friend experienced even social media after the relationship ended i won't say her name because i think she's known but after um the relationship ended he still had access to her socials so he would post random stuff um offensive things mm -hmm. he would contact other people like her friends saying offensive things talking like it's her um, so she shut down all her social media and went off social media completely. But he went further um, because, like we said, money talks. So he had access to people who could call her, threatening her. And they've hidden the number and all of that. So the reason I'm sharing that story is because when you leave a narcissist, it's not easy. Yeah. It's they don't easy. make it easy for you.
Of course, yes. They do not make it easy yeah, for you. Yeah. You said also your friends were poisoned around. Of course, yes, they were. They don't see you as the person yeah. that you know you actually are. And you're the one made to seem like you're not working hard. Yeah. You don't bring anything to this relationship. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with dating someone rich. Yeah? Yeah. Good for you. Okay? Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not saying that rich people are bad. But we're yeah. saying if they demean you mm. or if they have no boundaries with you, they're using money to manipulate you, then there is a big, big problem. Now, narcissists can also be dangerous, um, which is a lot of... You know, it happens more frequently when the narcissist is demanding the woman, obviously, because of physical strength. Yeah. But they can also be dangerous because of what they do within your friend group, within your environment, within your office environment. So now I want to ask you guys about the recovery period. After you've met this narcissist and you've dealt with them and there's already been negative impact in your life, how did you guys change the environment around you? How did you talk to your family and your friends? How do you change the work setting? What was it? What was the aftermath like? And what are some of the tips or things that you learned that might help somebody else? Um, personally, after the relationship, um, I just opted for happiness. Listen. Like that. Yeah, I opted for happiness and fixing myself and, you know, now focusing on the goals that I was, you know, dreaming about. Yeah. And, that. Yeah. and, and your dreams are valid. Of course, yes. <laughs> right now I'm living my dreams. Said they, weren't. <laughs> they are. I am living my dreams. So, I... Became closer with my friends because she never liked my friends. You understand? Ah, yeah. I like they that. They always want you to like their friends, but mm. not them liking your friends. Sure. And they isolate you. Of course, slowly. They do. Yeah, they so do. that's why she's like, I don't like them. Yeah, those I don't like them. I don't want to hang out with them and all that. So after she left, I started hanging out with my friends because them they believed in my, you know, my dreams and all that. Mm -hmm. They knew what's best for me. So I started making strides in life, making more. Memories, beautiful memories, traveling here and there, you know, sharing different ideas yeah. with my friends. You know, and I just washed away all the bad energy that was, you know, instilled yeah. in me. Did you burn some sage <laughs> around yourself? <yourself? laughs> <laughs> Not I really, per se, but at the end of the day, you just have to fix yourself one by one and just know, just remove everything that she did not right in your, um, as far as your life is concerned. You yeah. I, and it took me a while, it took me a while to deal with it and get my, you know, happiness back on track. But mm -hmm. it was a relief moment, you understand? You feel like you are not living your life the yeah. way you're supposed to be living. Right. You are living somebody else's life because she was dictating every single thing that she wants. She wants, like, what she wants about you, she wants it to go her way, you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. From the dressing bit of it yeah. to your addiction, you know, Everything. to what you do, you understand? Wow. Everything is all about her. Okay. So they don't give you a chance to, to yeah. be you. To Which be is so you. interesting because if I meet you and I want to date you, yeah. it's because I've liked who you who are you, when yeah. I found you. Yes. It's like getting a, it's like us meeting in a bar. Yeah. Then after a month, you want me to quit the bottle and mm -hmm. we met in a bar. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, sir. That bottle it's made so us true. meet. Yeah. That bottle made us meet. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Um, what would you give advice as Brian as the aftermath? Um, you gave really good advice of how to deal with them in the work setting and in that situation as well. So aftermath, how do you deal with this, this figure that is not going anywhere in your life? <laughs> so I think um, politely check in on such a character. I feel these are people that have, they are really more than willing to do the right thing, okay. but in the wrong way. Mm. They have valid ambitions, but in the wrong time. So I feel number one is just establishing, uh, number one, don't, don't do away with them because I feel such, such people are gifted in a way. Right. Because they are maybe kind of advanced. They see things because, again, um, you know, they are visionary people. Mm. So that's one way of viewing at them. But also not at the expense of who you are as a person. Exactly. So one thing you need to do is just, um, you know, be a good communicator. Listen to them and show them, you know, tell them, you know, whatever you did, you did the right thing. It's so nice for you to send my mom money. Yeah, but... But you see, this is affecting my ego. You're belittling me. And that is what drives a man. So whatever you did was wrong. But it, it was, it's, it's a nice gesture, but... Explain Maybe next time, how. go through me. Tell me, you know, Brian, you know, I want to send money. 
to your sister? Do you think how much should we send? Uh, the other thing is, you know, just embrace their visions, but also try bring them back to reality. <laughs> I like that. Tell them, you know, this is so good, but you see, currently maybe you are working, you are earning, let's say, a thousand dollars or two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. I'm working also, I'm earning maybe close to the same. Mm -hmm. So if you combine that effort, you cannot buy a Maybach. Right. But with time, we'll be able to do that. You see, that way, you've been able to change this person. Because at the end of the day, if we leave them, who will ever assist them? That's true. I think um, what you're saying is a narcissist can still have value to society, yes. but not at your personal expense. And yes, no, if you no. ask those questions that Brian is asking and you're not getting the right answer, please feel free to leave. <laughs> um, Alan? Uh, one thing that we will all agree is that no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. Oh. You can never teach people on how to respect you, but never allow them to, dis to disrespect you. So the thing is, uh, once you've uh, realized that this person, uh, or rather you've realized that you are in that kind of an environment and you have to move on, mm -hmm. take, take some time and uh, journal your journey. Look at maybe the problem was you. There are some things maybe I, I was permitting them, I was making the environment conducive for oh. them to, you know. So take some time, be real with the person in the mirror. Because sometimes you can, you can do all those kind of things, but what about you as an individual? So the moment before you start seeking a conducive environment out there, your internal environment also needs to, to be clear so that you attract who you are, you know. So take some time off, reevaluate, you know, do all those kind of things. Realign with yourself more with your vision, with your life purpose, so that you move on. I like that. Yeah. That is incredible. They always say we attract our own dysfunction. Yes. So if you work on yourself, then you're likely to not attract these people. Yeah. And with narcissists, whenever you're real and you can be true, like you know, being honest about your financial position or breaking up with them when you realize enough was enough, yeah. they realize, they realize, oh, I can't mess with this person anymore. Mm -hmm. It would have to be somebody else because yeah. they've woken up to the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming and sharing your stories. I, I hope that. you guys have been as entertained and as shocked <laughs> <laughs> as I have been. And I really appreciate you guys coming through. I want you guys to share your social media handles and where people can find you real quick. Nick, we can start off with you. Um, Instagram, name or Nick, um, YouTube, and I'm cut and uh, yeah, my office is at Garden Chambers, Jivan Gardens. If you need a suit, DM me. Nimrod a good Nick. suit. Yeah, a good suit. Nimrod Nick on Instagram. Let's do business. Brian? Brian uh, on Instagram at Brian Mo, uh on Twitter at Brian underscore Mo, but more importantly at Ajiri underscore KE on Instagram and also at Ajiri underscore KE on uh, both uh, Twitter, LinkedIn and Facebook. And we, our offices, again, are in Two Rivers Mall. Yes. Come shop with us as we give you employment opportunities. Oh, on Instagram, Alan underscore 320. Twitter, uh, Alan underscore, underscore speaks. Then Facebook, Alan Lawrence. You can DM me. You get a few of my merchandise, be it the books, be it the hoodies, and what have you. Then let's do business. Yeah, I like it. And you heard Alan's one-liner, so you can imagine how much more great advice you're actually going to get when you deal with him in person. Yeah. Again, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to you guys coming through. I'm definitely going to be having you guys again. <laughs> Everyone who is here tuned in, keep using the hashtag Mantalk and the hashtag KTN Life and Style. The conversation can keep going the whole, whole day. Tag them, ask some questions, DM them as well. They are here and willing to contribute. I am your host, Susan Jorge. You can find me on social media at Sura underscore common. Everywhere Sura common, you'll find me. And of course, KTN home. All right. We've had an incredible time with you guys. I'll see you Friday next week. Same place, same time. Bye.